Okay. Sorry guys. Um, all right. So I, um, I will get started. And so I, I don't think, I don't think we are going to have anyone here. So I will do, um, I am going to use the models that I have in front of me. I have the torso model here. I have a couple of the other ones. And then for the charts, just so I'm not like carrying around the laptop and making sure that you guys can see for those, I am going to pull up a picture of the chart on my computer because it'll be much easier for you to see, I think, and point some things out that way. Um, first of all, I do want to just go over some of the logistics of the practical, um, just to make sure you know what to expect. These are in the, um, if you go to the midterm lab practical folder, this is written in there. It's the very first link that you'll see. It's called midterm lab practical information. And I have told you guys this when I've seen you in person, but just as a reminder, just some of the, the basics about the practical, it will be 50 questions and it's just identification of structures. You're not asked, you know, functions of these structures or anything else other than just what the names of structures are. Um, so 50, 50 questions, just identification questions. You will have um, 60 minutes to complete the practical. And the questions are fill in the blank. It's not a multiple choice format. So you are typing, you're, you're doing it through D2L and you're typing in the names of the structures. Um, the, the list of terms for the lab practical is in your lab guide in appendix C, which starts on page 111. The one thing, and I, I know I mentioned this for the groups that is in there, but is not covered on the lab practical is all the way at the very end where it says VH dissector cross sections, that entire thing that's not on your lab practical. Okay, so none of the VH dissector cross sections, anything from there down um, is not on your practical, but everything else on that list could possibly be asked. Um, so the models and the charts that I'll be using are also listed in this um, midterm lab practical information section. So I will be using the heart model which is this. This is the heart model. Um, also, so this is for structures, you know, any structure of the heart, I'm gonna use the heart model for. For um, asking blood vessels, I could use the heart model for certain blood vessels that you can see on the heart. There's some here, there's some on the outside of the heart that supply blood to the heart wall itself. So I could use that. Um, I could also use the torso model for some of the blood vessels, which is right next to me. Uh, I pointed out just in the last time that we met, uh, a lot of the blood vessels that are in the neck and chest and then down like in the lower abdominal or pelvic area and then going into the leg, like the femoral vein, femoral arteries. So I'll use the torso model for some of those blood vessels. And then in addition to that, there are also blood vessels that you can see pretty well on the digestive chart and the chart that has the four torso pictures. And I'll be going over those charts in just a little bit. Then for the lymphatic system, there's really not a whole lot of structures that are part of the lymphatic system that are on your list for the practical. There are like a couple major organs, um, actually mainly just the spleen is the one big organ. And then like tonsils, you can see on the mouth chart, um, the lymph nodes and lymphatic vessels, you can see like in the axillary area um, on the torso model and the inguinal area down in the leg. And you can see the lacteals on the little picture that's part of the digestive system chart. So that's what I'll use for the lymphatic system. For the respiratory system, we have the two respiratory models that I've showed you guys in lab. Um, we have this one, shows parts of the larynx, shows the trachea, the two primary bronchi. And then we have this one, 
the sagittal section of the head where you can see the uh, regions of the pharynx. Um, you can see the hard palate, soft palate pretty well. The epiglottis, you can see really well on here. Um, the, the larynx, the trachea, the esophagus back here. So um, let's see. So I have those two. And then also um, I could use the, the chart with the four torso pictures. If I wanted to ask you guys like lobes of the lungs or the diaphragm, which is the muscle that's right underneath the lungs. And then for the digestive system. Um, for digestive system, I could use the torso model because this shows some of the major digestive organs um, like the stomach, the liver, the intestines. What else? The digestive chart obviously shows a lot of the major digestive organs and structures. Um, also the mouth chart, that's part of the day. The mouth is part of the digestive system. So um, I am gonna go over that, but that you can see like all the different types of teeth, the tongue, the lips, gingivi, and then the four torso chart with the pictures of the four torsos because they mainly focus on the thoracic and the abdominal areas. So on there, you can really see a lot of digestive structures too. So you guys have um, that whole list in that midterm lab practical folder. If you wanna know what possible models and charts I'll use, it's all the ones I just mentioned. They're all listed right there. Mainly what I wanna go through is, um, and I'll do this first. I wanna go through the things that I have not covered with you guys in lab. We have looked at the heart model. We've looked at the two digestive models and we have looked at the torso model and the organs that are associated with the torso model, um, like the stomach. Here's the, the stomach model. You can see it um, when the front is on it and when that's taken off so that you can see the, the folds. Things that you can see on the inside are mainly just the folds of the stomach, which are called the rugae, like the folds of the mucosa. And then the uh, pyloric sphincter at the bottom that controls the opening from the stomach into the first part of the small intestine, the duodenum. And the liver is part of that uh, torso model as well. So here you can see the liver and the gallbladder in green, right lobe, left lobe. And then the intestines. So this fits down in the bottom of the torso model. This, all of this here is the small intestine. And then remember the parts of the large intestine, the appendix is that small structure that looks like a pinky finger that hangs off of the bottom. Um, the cecum is right here, the first part of the large intestine. And then it comes up, that's the ascending colon transverse colon goes across, descending colon travels down the other side. Remember in the back, you have kind of that S curve. This is called the sigmoid colon. And then the bottom about eight inches, six, eight inches or so of the colon is called the rectum. Um, so we have all of those, and we've gone through all of that, but what I hadn't really done or had a chance to do with you guys are the, the charts. So I, like I said, I think it's going to be easier if I just pull them up. I'm going to do that now, um, rather than trying to like maneuver my laptop so you guys can see them here in the lab. Since I don't have anybody in here with me, I can just do it here on the computer. All right. So let me share my screen. All right. You should be able to see the mouth. I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger. You can ignore like all the arrows. I'm not, when I have this picture on the practical, I'm not gonna have all these arrows on it. Um, but these are just pointing to like every single thing that that's in the mouth. So first thing are the lips that go around all the way around the outside of the mouth. The gingivi, remember that's the term for gums. So you can see them on the top gingivi on the bottom. 
Remember the term labial frenulum? That's the fold of a membrane. It's a fold of mucous membrane and it secures the lip to the gums. So you have the labial frenulum. You can't see it quite as well on the top. You can see it a little bit better on the bottom. You can see that little fold of membrane right there attached to the gum. Um, also remember there are two spaces in the mouth. The largest one is the oral cavity and that's just the entire space behind the teeth within the mouth, this entire space in here. Then also remember that there is a smaller space which is outside of the teeth and gums, but it's within the lips and the cheeks. So it's this space here called the vestibule. And also on the bottom, it's the space here. Okay. Um, and then we have the palate. Now, I, I most likely will not ask you guys the hard palate and the soft palate on here because it is kind of difficult to see where the hard palate ends and the soft palate begins. It is much easier to see that like on here, for example, on the sagittal um, model of the head, because you can definitely see it's in two different colors. You can see where the hard palate ends and the soft palate begins. But I'll just point it out anyway, since it is on here, the hard palate is the anterior portion of the roof of the mouth right here. The soft palate is the, the posterior portion of the roof of the mouth hanging off of the soft palate, <coughs> excuse me. And you can see that on here is the uvula. So the uvula hangs down from the end of the soft palate. That's that muscular process that you can kind of see. Um, also way back at the, in the back of the mouth are the palatine tonsils. So there's two of them on either side, one on either side, there's one here and one here. There are sort of like oval structures. So here and here. The, um, the ridge that kind of sticks out going all the way down the roof of the mouth is called the palatine wraith, right here. The tongue obviously is this structure here. Uh, this, all the small bumps on the tongue surface are called papilla. And then finally the teeth. So I'll point out the types of teeth on, on the top, but remember it's exactly the same on the bottom. So on the top you have, um, and we're just gonna do the, use the dental formula and count to one side. Remember it's also exactly the same on the other side. So we'll start with the front tooth. The first two are incisors, one, two. Remember the dental formula for adults is two, one, two, three. So there's two incisors, one, two, and same thing on the other side. These are the two incisors on the other side. Um, so one, two incisors, and the next number is one. There's one canine tooth, that's sort of the sharp pointy tooth. Then there are two premolars, one, two, and then three molars in the back, one, two, three. Okay, same exact thing on the other side. And then same exact thing on the bottom. Okay, and then we are done with the mouth. Let me now pull up a picture of the digestive chart. Let me just make it a little bit bigger and then I'll share it with you guys. Okay, do you, I should have stopped for a second. Do you guys have any questions about that mouth? picture. Okay. All right. So let me then show you the next one, the digestive chart. So on here, mainly what you can see are digestive system structures and then some blood vessels too. Um, so up here in the, like in the head face, you can see the salivary glands. Here's the parotid gland in front of the ear, and that's the parotid duct. You can see that carries saliva into the mouth. This is the submandibular gland, and this one is the sublingual gland. Then going down, this is, you can see it's in green, and lymphatic vessels are always shown in green. Um, this is the thoracic duct. It's one of the major lymphatic vessels. 
Then this is pointing to the trachea. You can see the trachea and then the primary bronchi down here. Um, this tube down here, which passes behind the trachea is the esophagus. And then coming down here, that large blood vessel right next to it is the aorta. That part is called the thoracic aorta because it's in the thoracic cavity. And then going down a little bit farther, you can see some of the major digestive system organs. This is the liver. Here's the right lobe. This is the left lobe. Separating them, this white line is called the falciform ligament. The liver has been lifted up so that you can see the structure under it, which is the gallbladder shown in green. So this is the gallbladder. And then there are three ducts that carry bile. One is coming out of the gallbladder. One is coming out of the liver. And then when they unite, that forms the third one. So the, the and these are shown in green as well. So these are the green vessels that you can see here. The one that extends out of the gallbladder is called the cystic duct. The one coming out of the liver is called the common hepatic duct. Hepatic always refers to liver. And then where they come together down here, that's called the, the or just the bile duct. Sometimes it's called the common bile duct or just bile duct where they unite. Okay, and then this entire structure is the stomach off to the side of it. This is the spleen shown in that purplish grayish color. It's always pictured in that color. And then in here, there's various blood vessels. I don't ask many of these, but let me just identify them for you anyway. Um, this one that's shown in that purplish color is the hepatic portal vein carrying blood into the liver. Um, this one right here, is called the um, celiac trunk. Sorry, I blanked for a second. That's called the celiac trunk. Coming off of that and going into the liver is the hepatic artery. This small one coming up out of the celiac trunk, going into the stomach is called the gastric artery. So that's right here. Can make this a little bit bigger. I just don't wanna make it too big because then it'll get kind of blurry. So this arrow is pointing to the gastric artery. And then down here, this artery is actually passing behind the stomach to get to the spleen. So that is called the splenic artery. And then down here is the superior mesenteric artery. All right. So that takes care of all those little blood vessels. And again, I really, I don't ask hardly any of those at all, maybe one. Um, and just going down a little bit farther here, you can see the small intestine all coiled up. This, all, all of this is the small intestine. The membrane that is um, kind of in between the small intestines is called the mesentery. And the membrane that's the, that has a lot of fat in it, you can see it's kind of lumpy looking, pulled off to the side right here. This membrane is called the greater omentum. It, it normally covers all of the small intestine, but it's been pulled to the side so you can actually see the small intestine on this picture. And then down here, um, this is part of the large intestine. This is the cecum, that very first section of the large intestine. This down here is the rectum, and then this is the anus, the opening at the bottom. Okay, so that takes care of everything on that one. Yeah, question? Um, can you go back to that diagram again? Sure. The arrow on, on the stomach, I wonder what, what is it? Right arrow? Here. Yes. Just pointing to the stomach. Oh, the just stomach, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, any other questions about that chart? Okay, so there is one more, hold on, I have to find that one and pull it up. This is the one with the, the four torsos. So let me get that. Okay.
and let me share it. Okay, can you guys see this one? Looks like it, okay. All right, so there's four torsos on this chart. So I'm just gonna go like one, two, three, four. I'm starting at the top left and then going to top right and then bottom left, bottom right, the pictures of the torso. So starting with the first one in the top left, um, just showing you guys some of the main things that you can see. This is the thymus that is part of the lymphatic system. And then going down just some parts of the, the intestines. So this, this whole thing is the small intestine. Remember, we just saw this in the last chart, the membrane that kind of binds the small intestines together. So you see it like in between the small intestine is right here. That's called the mesentery. This is the large intestine going all around the outside of the small intestine. So the very first part of the large intestine, remember we've seen this a couple places, is the cecum. Then it comes up and it curves around. Here you can see pretty well the, the transverse colon going across. You guys see this white line that goes all along the colon. It's um, like a, it's a ligament basically that keeps it connected. Um, so it goes all the way across, so up the ascending colon, across the transverse colon. So that's called the tenia coli. Okay, so that's what this arrow was pointing to, that white line right there. And then just um, the colon comes down the other side. That's the descending colon. And that's really all you can see on that first picture. It's not, not a whole lot. On the second picture, that's um, right next to this one, you can see a little bit more because we've gone a little bit deeper into the body. Um, so on this one, you can see the liver. You can see the gallbladder peeking out from under the liver. Um, here's the stomach. Remember the membrane that connects the liver to the stomach is called the lesser omentum. So that's right here. Um, and then this membrane, now that the small intestine is removed, you can see this. Otherwise, it's not visible because the small intestine blocks it. This is called the mesocolon. So it helps bind the colon. To, or attach the colon to the abdominal wall. Um, and then parts of the colon again, and we've seen this in multiple places. You guys know the appendix is that little um, piece that looks like a pinky finger that hangs off of the bottom. Then the first section is called the cecum. And then the part that comes up is called the ascending colon where it curves. So the ascending colon curves around to become the transverse colon. That's called the hepatic flexure. And then it travels across and it curves down again. That's called the splenic flexure. It's named after the two organs that are right in those areas. Um, so it curves around underneath the liver. The term for the liver, um, or the term that refers to the liver is hepatic. That's why that's called the hepatic flexure. And then the spleen is all the way over here on this side. So that's why this one is called the splenic flexure because it's right underneath of the spleen. So it curves down, it travels down this side of the body that's called the descending colon, this whole section here. Remember we have that like S shaped curve right here that's called the sigmoid colon. And that's it for what you can see on that picture. And then if we go down a little farther, we can see um, some other things. Now that the liver has been removed. Oh, actually, let me go up. Sorry, I'm sorry. On here, I do want to point out, this is back to the first picture, that here you can see the lobes of the lungs. So um, let me just remind you of those really quickly. The, this is the right lung, superior, middle, and inferior lobes. And then this is the left lung. Um, and that is sup just superior and inferior lobes. Okay, sorry, I got reminded of that because now you can see the diaphragm, which is the muscle that's underneath of the lungs. You can see that whole thing pretty well. So it's all of this, and then it extends all the way back down against the posterior body wall. So all of this is the diaphragm. It goes down pretty far, actually. You don't really realize it. Um, so all of that, that whole big muscle 
is the diaphragm. Um, you can also see pretty well here two major organs. You can see the pancreas in yellow and the spleen in that purple color. Okay, the huge blue blood vessel here is the inferior vena cava. And then the big red blood, <laughs> big red blood vessel next to it, um, part of it is blocked right here, but you can see it down here. This is the abdominal aorta. So it travels right next to the inferior vena cava, just carrying blood down. The inferior vena cava is carrying blood up. Um, and then here's the celiac trunk. And going in and out of the spleen, you can see the splenic artery in red, right next to it, the, the splenic vein in blue. And that's it for that picture. And going down a little bit farther, um, you can see, so I, I typically ask these on the torso model, remember I told you guys this, but here you can see the common carotid arteries going up the neck. And you can see subclavian arteries going to, um, like out under the clavicles towards the arms. Um, this is the brachiocephalic artery right here. This is the aortic arch. Typically though, I do ask these blood vessels on the, the torso model. Remember I pointed those out last week or the week before to you when you were here in person. Um, let me see. See. Again, the diaphragm, you can see the diaphragm really well, this whole big muscle right here. Again, just like with the last picture, inferior vena cava, abdominal aorta. These are the two really big blood vessels here. Um, going into the kidney, or I'm sorry, coming out of the kidney is the renal vein. You can see it here as well, because you have two kidneys. So you're going to have two renal veins draining blood out. And you can see the renal artery carrying blood into this kidney right here in red. And then one other thing, you can see the three blood vessels that extend out of the abdominal aorta. You can see the celiac trunk, that's the first one. Right below that is the superior mesenteric artery. And then down here is the inferior mesenteric artery. So there's three, like coming out of the abdominal aorta, there's three branches, three arteries that branch out. The top one is the celiac trunk. Right below that is the superior mesenteric artery. And then down here is the inferior mesenteric artery. Um, so I usually ask one of those on here. And that is it on that, on the torso chart. So at this point, I've gone over the charts that I didn't get to show you guys um, when I had you with here in person. Um, we have already gone over all of the, the models and stuff, but I am happy to do anything again if you think that it would help or if there's anything you have a question about, let me know. Um, I know I reviewed right before we got on here what I um, provided you guys in the midterm lab practical folder. And I know that I have um, videos going over the heart model, um, going over actually all of the charts that I just pointed out. I have videos of me going over all those parts, but I just wanted to do it with you live since I didn't get a chance to. Um, let me just check and see. I think I have videos of me going over the respiratory models too. Yeah. So going over both the respiratory models, also the torso model. Um, yeah. So you have videos of all of that. But if you want me to do anything again, or you have questions about anything, now is your chance to let me know. I have a question about the, uh, the mid-sagittal head model. Okay, sure. I got it right. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so it has an arrow pointing to the tongue. Is that, is that going to say oral cavity or is it going to say tongue? So if there's an arrow pointing like here, yeah, it would depend because they're both right there. So you'll have to just make sure you guys need to, and that's, I'm glad you asked that. Please be really careful when you're, um, 
taking the practical because don't just look at the arrow and then just type in. There is it like next to the number, it is going to tell you what I'm asking for. So it's going to say name this space. Or it might say name this structure. If it says name this space, you know that I'm asking for the oral cavity. That's the only space that is that would be here. But if I say, you know, name this structure, name this organ, you know, I'm asking for like not a space. Does that make sense? Yeah. And also um, with the part where the nasal conch, I don't know if I'm saying it right, the nasal yep. conch is, there's like two two arrows, but I wasn't sure the top arrow and the um, the side arrow. All right. Let me see. I'll go to the picture that you're referring to because I don't remember where I put arrows. So let okay. me look. Um, that, that was my same question. Thank you. Okay. Let me see. Oh, so I think for one, I was just asking like nasal cavity. So the whole thing is the nasal cavity. But then these two things specifically are nasal concha within the nasal cavity. So again, you would know the difference because if I said name this name, name this big space here, you would know that I'm asking for the cavity versus if I say name these like bulges or name these, you know, name these structures that stick out in the in the nose, you would know to say concha. So I really do my best to like give you a clue about what I'm asking. So you know if it's a space, um, like in the heart, I'll say, um, you know, I'll be specific, I'll say name this chamber. So, you know, it's one of the four chambers of the heart versus like a valve or the chordae tendine. So I do give you that information so that you're, you're not just like randomly guessing because there are, you know, I know that there are some structures all in one area sometimes, and it can be hard to distinguish. Thank you. Sure. Uh, what, one more question for me is um, for the uh, head model behind the nas nas the same. nasal conscious behind that behind that what would that be look at number they say number ten arrow when you say head do you mean the same model I just had yes okay this one yes behind the conscious what what, what would that be it's a number ten what did you call that um. Oh, where the arrow was pointing? Yes, for the number 10. That's the opening, the opening of the pharyngotympanic tube. Okay, just the opening. Thank you. Okay. Guys, have any other questions? What was the white line across the colon called? Tenia coli. Okay, thank you so much. Sure. Yeah, it's on your. It's on the list. Like most things are grouped together, so it's in the digestive system section where you see, like, large intestine. So it'll be kind of towards the end of your list. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Any other questions that you guys can think of? Okay. Um, if not, I just want to give you a couple of reminders um, as far as assignments and things that are due this week. Lab group A you guys have no other lab assignments due this week, although there is a metabolism lab, online lab. Um, it is not due until after spring break, but you can begin working on it if you, if you would like to. Lab group B, however, you guys have, you have that, um, which again, you have like two weeks to complete, so you don't need to do it now. But you guys also have your starch lab quiz which is due on Thursday. So it's available today. 
You can take it today, tomorrow, or Thursday. Lab group A already did it last week. So if you're in lab group A, you've done that, you're good. You don't need to, to do anything else for this week. Um, but lab group B, you need to do the follow-up starch lab quiz. Um, and I just wanna remind you that as long as you do it, you will get full points for it. It doesn't matter how many questions you get wrong, um, especially if you are participating in the research study. I don't know how many of you guys are, but if you are, it's especially important to answer honestly and not look up answers because that's really the whole point of the research. So if you get all of them wrong, it doesn't matter. You'll still get 100% for just completing it. So just remember that that's due on Thursday. And then the only other thing you guys have this week is the lab practical. And you can take that Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. Um, but just remember, it's like a test. Once you sit down to take it, you have to complete it in one sitting. You can't do like a little bit Thursday, a little bit Friday, a little bit Saturday. You have to sit down and take it all at once. Okay, so those two things are the only things that you have due this week. After that, you have a break um, because we have spring break next week. So there are no classes. Um, I will be available. I think I'm gonna take a day, maybe two off, but we, we don't just get off, unfortunately. So I will be working a lot of the week. It, so if you need anything, um, I probably will check my email every day too. So just contact me, but you know, obviously take some time and relax and don't think about school. Um, and then I'll see you guys. Well, we do have a Zoom on Thursday. I almost forgot about that. We have a Zoom lecture Thursday, um, but then I won't see anyone in person for two weeks. So nothing next week at all. And then the following week, um, we'll be back to in-person lab on Tuesday. All right, any questions about the schedule, anything coming up? All right, well, if you think of anything, send me an email. I guess I will end for now. Thank you guys for 